Hey everybody, it's Sandy Branch. My name's Jay, of course. I don't know if anybody's on just yet. Doesn't seem like there's anybody on. Yeah. Just stay here until somebody comes on. Oh. <laughs> oh, well hello there, whoever you are. Good to see you. Uh, well, I don't get to see you. Yes. Oh, we have two. It's good to see both of you. Uh, of course, I'm not seeing you. You're seeing me. We're seeing each other, sort of. But um, thanks for coming on. Uh, we're going to be sitting here waiting for about another four, three to four minutes uh, before we get started so that people can get signed on here. Get, get up on here. So, uh, anyways, uh, I'll go ahead and talk while we're doing this. So, I, I appreciate you coming on Wednesday nights. I know it's uh, tough for a lot of people to get here on Wednesday nights. Again, what we ask from you is that if you uh, like what we're doing, if you uh, aren't able to come on Wednesday nights, but you were able to, to sit and watch this, um, we're, we're thinking about going ahead and continuing this, even when we start coming together, uh, we'll, we'll be able to, to do this live, and that way um, people can come on anytime and watch uh, the, the Bible study. But, um, but let us know. Uh, let your deacon know. Let uh, let you know. Call the church. Let us know that you're, or just put a comment in to your phone there, and let us know that that uh, you like what we're doing. Um, but continue following. I think right now we don't have anything uh, lined up for the month of April. Um, I think we've canceled everything, uh, including Sunday, uh, Easter Sunday going to be kind of weird, I think, um, not having an Easter Sunday with everyone, and a, uh, it's kind of a bizarre time right now, but I hope everybody's doing well. Um, again, if you need anything, please call us and let us know. Uh, let us know here, or leave a message um, with Jennifer or on the answer machine, or uh, with your deacon, and uh, let us know if you need something, and we'll get it to you. Uh, if you need groceries, uh, we can go to the store for you and get it. Um, so just let us know. Um, and I think that's about it, really, uh, as far as anything else. So, uh, but I mean, as far as like uh, announcements or anything, I think that's pretty much where we're at. Um, I'm not actually sitting in this office alone. I have uh, a plethora of people. <laughs> <laughs> now uh, it's uh, got Doug and Wayne in here, and uh, they're examining everything and making sure everything is running fine. So I appreciate their help in doing this and their expertise and the technology. Of course, they're shaking their head no, but but uh, but I wouldn't know how to do this. Anyway, I'm not that great in technology. And, um, I don't know, uh, how many people are, have, have joined up right now? So we've got about, uh, eight, eight viewing right now. That's good. That's good. So, uh, I'm sure as we go along that people will start coming on, <clears throat> but right now, uh, what I want to do right now is uh, is pray for our country, for our church, for our church, uh, and for our community, but uh, and the leaders. So, if you would just bow your head with me and, and pray where you're at right right there, and, uh, and and let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, we come to you and we thank you for. For all that you do for us, we thank you that you are a mighty God, that you are a God who loves us, who is long-suffering, who um, is merciful and gracious to us, who is forgiving and kind and uh, 
Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you that you are a God um, who loves his children. And we thank you that you have um, saved us. Father, I thank you that that uh, you have taken me out of the world and given me life. And then you have given me a job to do. But Lord, you've given all of us a job to do. Uh, those who you have pulled out of this world and into your family. Father, you've given us a job to accomplish and that you said that we will do it. It's not that we may do it or we might do it, but that we will, that we would walk in these things that you have created for us. And so, Father, I pray that you take your people here at this church and that you move them to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, your goodness, and to let everybody know that your kingdom is here and that it is growing and that um, that you are in control of all things. Father, saying that, I, I know that you're in control of all things. I know that uh, we have a world that mocks us, that uh, puts us down because we trust in someone we cannot see. But yet, Lord, uh, we know that you are real because you move in our lives and you've, you've changed our lives and you've, you've worked great and mighty things in our lives. You provide for us. You give us all things. You uh, protect us. You, uh, you shelter us. And so, Father, I thank you for that. I thank you that uh, your glory will be shown through uh, your children. And so, Father, I thank you that uh, you have saved people here in this nation and uh, that they're doing wonderful things and that your glory is being shown around the world and that, uh, and that uh, through your people, Father, uh, people will see the love that we have for one another and they'll see the love that we have uh, for the world to come to know you. And so, Father, uh, at this time, during this, um, this unprecedented time, that you, uh, uh, you, you do a mighty work, and we're asking you to do a mighty work through us as well. And our leaders, Lord, give them the wisdom and the courage and the, uh, the fortitude to, to just uh, do what they're doing planning and, and with all wisdom and and Lord we ask that you um, turn our nation back to you Father that uh, people will come to know you and uh, we thank you that you have given us leaders that uh, we can trust in and that we can um, uh, get behind and get things done Father I pray for our community I pray Lord God that you will um, use us in our own communities uh, in the churches that, that are around us and the, and the people that are around us that if there's a need that we are able to reach out and uh, most of all Lord that we uh, bring life to people through your son Jesus Christ and so Father give us that um, that opportunity to proclaim how great you are and what you've done for us so, Father, I thank you. I thank you for this time. I thank you for your word. Uh, as I study it, Lord, it, it, it does something to me. It, 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 it just make, gets me excited about uh, what you've done for us. And when I see how, you, how everything just kind of intertwines uh, with each other, Old Testament and New Testament, every verse, uh, it just amazes me that this book was written by so many different people, but yet uh, through the Spirit of, Christ, of, of God, it, um, you, have, you have written, you have penned this book. And so, Father, I thank you. It all makes sense to me. Uh, it, it, uh, and it gets me uh, thrilled when I see and listen and read and, and see it all coming together. So, Father, I pray that other people will get excited, too, about your word. And, they, and, uh, and then want to go and tell it 
proclaim it, live it. And we ask these things to come to you in the mighty name of Jesus, who died for us, who was buried and rose again so that we can have everlasting life. And it's this, through his name that we come to you. In Jesus' name, amen. So, last week, last week we were talking, um, we're in the book of John, if you're, if you're just now coming on. Um, we're in chapter 8 of John. And um, last week we were talking about uh, how Jesus is, is uh, discussing with the Pharisees and the, the Jews is what um, uh, John calls them. And when he refers to the Jews, he's usually referring to the, the leadership. So you've got him talking to the leadership and, of, the, uh, of, the, of the Jews. And, uh, and he's telling them that he has many things to speak about them. And, um, but uh, he who sent me is true. And the things which I heard from him, these I speak to the world. Now, if you weren't with us uh, Sunday, and if you weren't able to hear and, uh, and get on uh, the live feed, um, what we were talking about, it, when it was in Hebrews, and I'm going to turn to that real quick. And, and, and what I want to show you is that uh, in Hebrews, you have, uh, it, let me get it real quick. So it says here that God, after he spoke long ago to the fathers in the prophets in many portions and in many ways, in these last days, has spoken to us in his Son. Uh, now, what he's saying here is that God has spoken, and that, that he's bringing salvation, he's bringing reconciliation. Uh, we've been separated. We've been separated from the very beginning. Uh, when Adam and Eve turned their backs on God, we were separated uh, as, as Adam, as our representative, uh, as our, the world representative, has separated us from life. And so what happened was that because he turns his back on God and decides that he doesn't want God's life, he wants uh, to do it on his own, uh, the pride of life and the, the lust that he had uh, and the lust of the eye, and, and um, he wants to turn his back on God and and what he did was he separated himself from the very life, the very life, the very person that gave him life, the very being that gave him life. And so, uh, with Adam being our representation, uh, from that moment on, every child of Adam, uh, and that's including us, all the way down to us, have been born into the wrath of God. Once you take that first breath, once you come out of the womb, you have the wrath of God on you. There is, there is, uh, it's not about your good works or your bad works. Uh, you're not going to stand before God in heaven and, you know, and your good works are going to outweigh your bad works. And uh, you, you're not going to be able to go before, go before God and say, well, I was a good person. Look what I did here and look what I did here. And, and that's not the point. The point is, is that the wrath of God was already on your head from the very moment you came out of the womb. And a lot of people don't realize that. A lot of people think that, um, you know, that, that you're born innocent and then eventually you fall into this sin. But you're born into sin. There's a wrath there. And so, God didn't leave us. He didn't leave his creation. He didn't annihilate his creation. He didn't get rid of his creation. He had a plan from the very beginning of time, even before this even happened. Um, he had a plan to save his people, a certain people for himself. He wasn't going to save everybody. He wasn't planning on saving everybody. He was planning on saving a people for himself. And so he set up a plan and from the very beginning of time, um, before he created the world, and Christ was the focal point. Christ was the climax of, of it all. And so throughout time, throughout history, 
what God was doing is that he was revealing little snippets of himself here and there. And he would go silent, and then he would come back, and, and he would do talk to a prophet, or talk to Moses, or talk to Abraham, Noah, and, and, then, uh, and then all of a sudden he would disappear. Not, he was still here, but he wouldn't speak. He wouldn't talk. He wasn't revealing himself to the world. And so what, what, you happen, what, what was happening was that each time he would reveal a little bit more and more and more of himself. Um, and it says here that he did this in many portions and in many ways. I mean, he talked through a bush. He talked in visions. He talked mouth to mouth is what he said to, to uh, um, um, uh, Aaron and Miriam when they uh, were rebelling against uh, Moses, basically. And they, they, were, uh, they were talking bad about Moses because he uh, married a Cushite woman. And so they started talking a little bad about him. And, and uh, so God called them both, uh, all three of them, Moses, Miriam, and, Abram, uh, and, and Aaron, and brought them all together. And, uh, and he starts uh, chastising Miriam and uh, Aaron for turning their backs on, on Moses. But he says to them, it's very interesting, he says to them, um, you know, I come to vision. I come to people in visions, but with my with Moses, my servant, whom uh, you know I love, who he's he's doing a great job. Uh, I speak to him mouth to mouth. I mean, I'm face to face with Moses, and then he's stricken um, Miriam with leprosy for seven days, for a week, um, for for uh, her rebellion or her talking bad about Moses. So, um, so what you see, though, is that, that God is talking to Moses. He's talking to Moses face to face. He's, he, um, in fact, there was one time where Moses even said, uh, show me your face. I want to see your face. I want to see your glory, right? And uh, we talked about this before. And so God says, if you see my face, you will surely die. And so he said, uh, but what I'll do is I'll stick you in the cleft of this rock and I'll put my hand over it, and as I pass by, I'll remove my hand, and you'll be able to see my hind parts, is what the, the Hebrew says. It's, it's my back part, my hind parts. And, uh, but what it is, is the glory that follows behind him. And so, um, so Moses got to see the glory of God. But here's the beauty of it. As God was passing by, he proclaimed his name, the Lord, the Lord uh, almighty that uh, uh, um, uh, what was it um, gracious and merciful and long-suffering and and kind and and um, uh, just all these things that you would think you know uh, this is he's pronouncing his name he's pronouncing who he is uh, forgiving of sins and he, he's, he's pronouncing all of this as he's passing by of who this is who he is this is who he is He's forgiving, he's long-suffering, he's gracious, he's merciful, he's kind, he's forgiving of sin. But yet he also says that he is, um, uh, to those who do not believe him, do not trust him, uh, he will um, bring judgment upon him, upon them. So you're seeing God's wrath in this as well uh, as he's passing by. But what you're seeing is the glory of God. What, what Moses sees is the glory of God that's behind, that as he's proclaiming this name and he passes by, he gets to see this glory. And, um, and then when Moses came off the mountain, he, he was so touched by the glory that his body began to shine. His face was shining at, like the sun. And he couldn't talk to the people, because, and the people were like, were afraid of him. They were like, dude, you got to do something with your face. Like, we can't talk to you. We, we, you know, it's too bright. So Moses was walking around there with a um, sackcloth over his head there for a while um, until the glory wore away, I guess. I don't know. Um, but it's just very interesting that, that, um, that this is the glory of God. And, and I truly believe with all my heart that what Moses was seeing as he's passing by was 
the glory of God, which is Christ. I, 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 uh, Christ is the glory of God. And in fact, it even says here that he is, um, in, in Hebrews 3, and he is the radiance of his glory. And we're going to get into that Sunday. But it says here that he is the radiance of his glory and the exact representation of his nature. The exact representation of his nature. So when Christ came, and it says that the fullness of God dwelt within Christ. Right? Not the fullness of God dwelt within Christ. His, his nature. And so when God spoke, when, when he, he spoke by Christ. In fact, it says here in, in, in uh, Hebrews 2, or Hebrews 1, verse 2, it says, In these last days has spoken to us, and my Bible says, in his Son, but it actually is in Son uh, in the Greek. It just means in Sonship. He's, he's talking to us in Sonship. In other words, his Son came. If it, if, uh, if the, the, the prophets were a, a whisper, then God, uh, then God, his son, his uh, Christ is the shout. Okay? And so what you're, what you're seeing here is that God is speaking through his son. He's revealing his salvation. He's revealing who he is. He's revealing everything about him through his son. Everything that he wants to reveal to us is being revealed through his son. And up to that point, like I said before, it was just fragment. It was fragment after fragment, you know, and it would get, uh, you'd, you'd get a, a little glimpse of it, a little bit more glimpse, and, and then he was silent for, for hundreds of years. He, he, he was silent for hundreds of years, and then all of a sudden, uh, John the Baptist pops up on the scene and starts proclaiming, uh, you know, that the, the Christ is coming. He's making straight. Uh, he's he's uh, the path. He's making that path straight. And so he's getting that path straight. And, and like I said, God had been silent for all these years, hundreds of years. And all of a sudden, John the Baptist comes on the scene. John the Baptist, who was full of the Holy Spirit, full of the Holy Spirit. He was born with the Holy Spirit. And he comes out, and he and when he gets older, he starts proclaiming that Christ is coming, that the kingdom is near. That, that, that it's, it's getting ready to happen. He's trying to get the people, uh, um, uh, basically trying to get the people right and ready, right for the picking, uh, so that when Christ comes in, it's a smooth sailing. So, but what we're seeing here is that, that God is speaking through his son, speaks through his son. In fact, Christ is, according to John 1.1, 1, 1, uh, that that Christ is the Word, the Word of God. In fact, uh, let's re read it. John 1.1, 1, 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. That means it was separate from God the Father. He was towards, okay? And then it says, And the Word was God. So he was God, but yet you're seeing the Trinity here. You're seeing a little bit of the Trinity and so you see that there, there are uh, three persons in one essence. Okay, so they're face to face. They're towards one another. That's the separation. That's relationship. And then the fact that he was God. Okay, and then it says that he was in the beginning with God. And all things came into being through him. And apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. God made the world. God made everything in the world. He created the universe. He created everything. Right? But he did it through Christ. You had Christ. You had uh, the, the, the Holy Spirit and the Father working together, uh, creating, creating the world, creating the universe, creating all the things that you see. And so we see that he is in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him. Uh, verse 4, in him was life. And the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Then we skip on down to 
Let's get down to um, 14. Chapter 1, verse 14. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw His glory. We saw His glory. Glory as of the only begotten from the Father. Here it is. Full of grace and truth. Grace and truth. Christ is not... Uh, he, he is truth. He, he is uh, uh, he is true. He is God. He is he is a God of God. He is uh, he is true. And um, when Christ says that I am the way, the truth, and the life, what He's saying is that I am the reality. I am uh, the truth. Uh, this world here, the way we live in this world, is a lie. And I've I've come to bring truth. I am the truth. He says, I am the truth. He's, uh, and he's not just a truth. I want you to get that as well. He's not just a truth. He is the truth. And so what you see here is that he is full of grace and truth. That John testified about him and cried out saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me has a higher rank than I, for he existed before me. For of his fullness, right there, of his fullness, we have all received, and grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth were realized through Jesus Christ. No one, here it is, no one has seen God at any time. The only begotten God who is in the bosom of the Father, which is Christ, who came from the Father, he has explained him. He is the Word. He is the truth. He is the reality. And so what happens is he's, he's coming. He, he came. He came. Uh, and, and, so, and, and in his coming... What he's doing is he's bringing God's word to the people. His word is salvation. His word is of forgiveness. His word is of kindness and mercy and grace. Remember who the, the glory of, the, of God passing by Moses? Well, Christ hanging on the cross was God screaming at his loudest of who he was to us. I want you to get that. I want you to understand that Christ hanging on the cross was showing us and telling us and screaming at the, at the loudest of who our God is, how our God forgives, how our God is merciful and gracious and kind and long-suffering. But here's the thing. With that comes judgment. Because if you don't believe, if you don't hear his word, if you don't hear his word, okay, if you don't heed his word, if you don't keep his words, if you don't abide in his words, and his words don't abide in you, then that judgment will come to you. Because his commandment was that we believe him, that we trust him. His commandment was to us that we uh, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. That means love Him with all your heart. Love Him with all your mind. Trust Him. Obey Him. That's what you want to do. That commandment that He gave us was that when He, when he also said that we are to uh, believe in the one whom God has sent. That, that was the commandment. To believe God and the one whom He has sent. Now here's the thing. If you believe the one whom He has sent, then you believe God. If you don't believe the one whom he has sent, then you do not have God. You do not know God. And God is not with you. But that judgment, that judgment comes as well with Christ hanging on that cross. There is judgment. And see, the judgment of God that we deserve, that we all deserve, right? If we believe then my sins, 
you know, this is what the, the whole salvation thing was, was that my sins are being placed on his shoulders. My sins, if I trust in him, if I believe in, in, that he is the Messiah, that he is the Son of God, and that he came in the flesh, and that he dwelt among us, if I truly believe that, and I hold on to that, then my judgment is, is no longer. I have no longer have, I'm no longer condemned. My judgment has been put on him, and he's paid for my, my sins. Now, if you don't believe, if you don't trust that, if you don't keep his words, if you don't hold to that, then the problem is, is that that judgment comes to you. You have to pay for your sins. And that's hell. That's hell. That, that, is, that is an eternal damnation. And so, so Christ hanging on the cross is showing the salvation that's there for you. It's showing, uh, it's revealing who God is. It's revealing his love. It reveals his mercy. It reveals his grace. He's, he spreads his arms out to you in the middle of heaven and, and earth. He's suspended there. And he's screaming, this is who I am. This is how much I love. That I would go to the depths of, of dying for you in order to save you. That's how much our God loves. That he would, he would send his only son to die for us so that we can have a relationship with him, with, with God Almighty. An eternal relationship, not just a relationship. We become heirs to the, to the throne. That means we're adopted we're, we, because of God's uh, Christ's redemption for us. We are redeemed. Uh, we are adopted into his family. We are heirs to all that God has. All that is Christ is ours. And that's what God is saying. God is saying, this is how much I love you. That I would go to this depth in order to bring you close to me. In order for you to have what I want for you. An eternal inheritance. But the beauty of it all is we get him. He's our reward. He's our reward. It's not so much the things that we'll get out of it, but it's what who we'll get out of it. It, it will get Christ. But what I want you to see, going back here, is that God is speaking through Christ. In fact, Christ says all the time. He says in John Uh, let's see, John 5, I think it was. Um, so in verse 20, uh, or was it verse 19, Therefore Jesus answered and was saying to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself unless it is something he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, the things the Son also does in like manner. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that he himself is doing. And the Father will show him greater works than these, so that you will marvel. For just as the Father raised the dead and gives them life, even so the Son also gives life to whom he wishes. For not even the Father judges anyone, but he has given all judgment to the Son. Now get this, he's given all judgment to the Son, so that heaven and earth, Right? Heaven and earth, so that all heaven and earth will, in verse 23, will honor the Son even as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. He says, truly, truly, I say to you, he who, here it is, hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. And does not come into judgment, but has passed out of death into life. Now, did you get that? I mean, it, this is this is what I want you to get. And, it, and it's constantly, it goes through here. From, from what we've been studying from the very beginning. From the very beginning, when Christ comes on the scene, 
He says, he always says, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Right? Hear. Because God is speaking. When Christ is telling you that he is the Son and he doesn't do anything except what the Father is showing him to do, what he's saying is that I'm not getting in the way. Uh, I am a conduit for God the Father speaking through me. And basically, that's what's happening. And, and so what he's saying here is that I don't do anything of my own. I don't say anything of my own. It, it's not from me. It is from the Father because the Father is speaking. He spoke long ago through the prophets in many portions and in, in many ways, but now he's speaking through his Son. He's speaking by his Son. And you'll see this over and over and over again. He says, uh, you do not have his word abiding in you, for you do not believe him who sent, whom, whom he sent. That's in verse 38 of chapter 5. The Father who sent me has testified of me. He's talked of me. He's telling of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his form. So, so he's telling them, you, you do not have his word, that word that, that's, that he's speaking. They can't hear it. They, they don't hear it. They don't understand it. In fact, Isaiah even said that, uh, that, that seeing that they may see and hearing that they may hear, he's going to clog their ears and their, their eyes so they can't see and get saved. That, that's the whole purpose, that so they won't get saved. And, and, and so it'll push, it pushes Christ, uh, they, they push Christ to the death and uh, to the cross. And so what, what they're saying, what he's saying here is that you don't hear me. Why can't you hear me? It's because you cannot hear me. Uh, he says that as well. Um, uh, but what I want to get back to is John chapter 8. <laughs> that was a long introduction. That was a long introduction. But I want you to see this, that God is speaking through Christ from the, the moment he gets here, the moment he starts his ministry. The, the Holy Spirit it descends upon him, and, it, it, and he's moving. And, and even when he's being tempted, this is really cool, even when he's being tempted by Satan in the wilderness, right, he says, uh, Satan comes to him and says, um, you're hungry, you know, turn this bread to the stone. Uh, if you are the Son of God, if you are the Son of God, uh, then uh, turn these, these stones here into bread. And Christ says, uh, what does he say? He says um, that man does not live by bread alone, but every word that comes out of the mouth of God. If Christ is the Word, He is the Word, that is your life. He is your life. He's the life. In fact, it even said that uh, um, in Him was the, He is the light of life. Let me look real quick on John 1 real quick. I want to... Uh, But it says that in him he was the light of life. Well, in verse 4 it says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it or understand it. Um, but um, verse 12, But as many received him, received the word uh, to them, he gave the right to become children of God, even those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, uh, nor the will, nor the flesh, nor the will of man, but they were born of God. So, uh, but what you see here is that he is the light of life. He is the light of life. And he has the life. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And so, um, let's get into the text real quick. And I knew we were only going to do about three verses. So, 
Um, but what he's saying here is uh, he explains to him in verse 27, they did not realize that they had been speaking to him about the Father. In verse 28, so Jesus says, when you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am, ego and me, that, that, um, that Greek Two Greek words that, that give that emphasis of I am. It's the it's in the Septuagint. That's what they used for for God's name, I am. And what he's saying here, this is a sign of divinity. And when you when you hang me, when you lift me up, the Son of Man. Uh, when you lift up the Son of Man, you will know that I am. And I do nothing on my own initiative, but I speak. There it is. I speak. These things as the Father taught me. He's not speaking of himself. He is allowing the Father to speak through him. And he who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do the things that are pleasing to him. As he spoke these things, and there it says, many came to believe in him. Now what does that mean? What does that mean? Many came to believe in him. Well, we saw that, you know, he had many disciples at one time. We can go back a couple of chapters. But then when he starts talking about how they're going to have to eat his flesh and, and drink his blood, and uh, they were thinking to themselves, what is this? What's he talking about? And, and, and they, they left him. He had all these disciples, uh, and, the, and there was only 12 left, basically the, the 12 that he had chosen, and and, and after he said all this, because of, 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 of what he said, they didn't like what he said. They hated what he said. Well, this is a hard saying, they said. This, who, can, who can handle this saying? And so they left. And then he turns around, Jesus turns around to his disciples, and he says, are you going to go too? And Peter says, where are we going to go? Where are we going to go? You have the words, remember? God speaking, you have the words of eternal life. So, um, you know, these are people that believe in him. These are people that, that believe. So Jesus, uh, in verse 31, so Jesus was saying to the Jews who had believed in him. Now get this. If you continue in my word. If you continue in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine. Now, uh, I always go to this verse, uh, the, the, this parable, where um, Christ is talking to the, uh, the people, and he's, um, it's the seed in the soil, and he says that there's this seed that's being tossed out, and that seed is the gospel. It's being tossed out, and, and the soil is you, or, or, or the world, you know, the people. And um, there's certain types of soil that this gospel, this seed falls on. falls on this hard, beaten path, and uh, the, the, the birds of the air come and take it away. And Christ says that that's, that's, um, that's Satan. Uh, it, you know, it's a whole hard heart, and uh, the seed bounces off that heart, and Satan comes and takes away the gospel and, and that person, that soil, is, is no good. It's, it's dead. And then you've got the, the one who, um, the seed who, uh, that, that falls on the, the rocky ground, and it doesn't have any root, and it grows up, and then the, the heat of the day comes, and it burns up that plant. And uh, Christ was saying that this is one who hears the gospel and receives it with joy. Oh, this is great. I love everything that's going. I love these programs. I love the, the, you know, the youth program that we have. I love the, the choir. I love uh, all the stuff that we, oh, I love being around the people. That's great and everything. But they, they're not, they don't have a firm root. They don't have Jesus Christ. And so what happens is when, when persecution starts to come, the heat starts coming, then they shrivel up and die. You, you never see these people again. And then you've got the, 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 the third soil where the seed, the gospel falls on it, and it starts to rise, and you see this, like it's got life, you know, same thing. Everybody's all excited about what's going on in church and what's happening. And, and then all of a sudden it says that the cares of this world, 
the fortunes of this world, uh, the worries of this world, and, and the world being the cosmos, the, 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 the system of it. We talked about that as well as the system. Uh, they, they, it wraps them up and it chokes them out. It kills them. And you never see these people again. And, you know, and, and, and the Bible says here that those who continue in my word, those who continue in my word, he says here, if you continue in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine. And we could go on and on and on. Um, let's see. Uh, I wrote some of these verses down. Luke 21, 16 through 19. Luke 21, 16 through 19. He says, um, But you will be betrayed by even parents and brothers and relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. These are people that believe, right? And you will be hated by all because of my name. Yet, not a hair of your head will perish. Now, it says here that you will be put to death, but not yet a, a hair of your head will be perish. Will perish. Uh, that means an everlasting life. You still have everlasting life. And it says in the verse 19, By your endurance, your steadfastness, your perseverance... Uh, this is the word here. By your endurance, you will gain your lives. And, and, it, and, and Romans 5, 3 through 4. Let's look at that real quick. Romans 5, 3 through 4. Romans 5, 3 through 4. It says here, uh, And not only this, but we also exult in our tribulations, Knowing that tribulations bring about perseverance, there it is, tribulation will bring about perseverance. Now, a test will come to those who believe. Tests will come, and it will expose you for who you are. I always said that, the, that tribulations, these trials and tribulations, do two things. They either push you away from God, or they pull you closer to God. And those who are being pulled closer to God are persevering. Those are the ones who will persevere because tribulation brings about perseverance. And perseverance will bring proven character. It'll show who you are. It'll show who you are. It'll show uh, the, the character that you are, the, the, um, uh, whose image you are. Are you Christ? Are you in the image of Christ? It'll show that. Uh, perseverance will bring about that character. And then proven character brings hope. And then hope does not disappoint because the love of God has poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. It's truly amazing. Verse 15 of Romans 15.4 15, 15.4 4, and then uh, we'll start to wind it down here. We may have to keep going on this next week. Uh, 15.4 For whatever was written in early times was written for our instructions, so that through perseverance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. Perseverance. This, this steadfastness. This patience. It, it comes with steadfastness. It comes with, with uh, patience. With endurance. Um, like I said, I, I've seen many a people uh, I, I, that I came to church with, and uh, I was going through uh, when I when I first became a believer um, when I was 33, 33 years old, and uh, I, I go back to the church and I find out you know most of those people they don't even go to church anymore, they don't even the, a lot of them are atheists and uh, have turned their backs on God. Uh, and, and, and done some crazy things. A lot of people have died, um, you know, because of, of what they've done. And so, um, so it, it, it's it's discouraging to watch. It's discouraging as a as a pastor to see people come in and they profess Christ. They profess, uh, and they say, "I'm a believer. I trust." And then I'm like, "Okay, well, we'll see." Basically, it 
it's like, oh, I'm, I'm excited for you. And I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be all out for you. I'm going to be like, yeah, that's great. I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to keep going, keep going, keep going. But at the same time, I'm going to be like, we'll see. You know, when that persecution comes, when the, the world starts to become more important than going to church, when playing baseball becomes more important than going to church, uh, that your kids' uh, uh, sports life becomes more important than, than meeting and studying God's Word. When, um, I mean, think about it. You, you think about these things. When, um, when uh, let's say, uh, watching TV uh, while you eat becomes more important than praying over your dinner. Or uh, it, it, other things become more important than reading your Word. Other things become more important than, than praying. And, and so it, it just start, you start to see this slowly picking away, tick, you know, just kind of hacking away at, at, at it. And then all, all of a sudden, it's just, you're totally gone. You're, you're gone. And uh, I've seen it. I've seen it so many times. And, and, and you've seen it, I'm sure. But as a believer going up in, in school, I mean, in church, uh, you, you, there's a, I'm sure there's a lot of people you will ask, scratch your head going, man, whatever happened to that guy? He used to come here all the time. What happened? And so um, it, it's discouraging. But you see here, Christ even says, um, if you continue in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine. And um, there it is, my word, my word. It, because his word is not his own word. It's, it's God speaking. Uh, if you continue in what God has said, if those words have gone to your heart, if those words have awakened you, and, and if those words are still in you, uh, if the commandment of God is still in you, to trust him, to trust his son, to trust him, uh, to love one another, if those things are in you, then, um, you know, down the line. It, it, we'll have to see down the line. Because it may be, you know, uh, I, 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 you hear of all these people that are falling away from the faith that were, you know, pastors. Uh, Josh Harris, I think, was one who, who uh, uh, wrote books about I Kiss Dating Goodbye and all these things for the youth. And now he doesn't really believe in it or you've got the, the guys who had something to do with uh, in the Bible uh, or you know whatever it is with the veggie tales type of thing and all these years they've written these songs and sung these songs to these kids but then all of a sudden now they're you know turn their backs on God and say oh is it just, it's all a lie and, and that was a long period of time and and so um, and, and in fact John even said that these people were, were leaving the church and they were going out and he was calling them antichrist uh, because they were not, they, they, even though they were of us, they left us and were not of us. In other words, what he's saying is even though they were around us, they really weren't of us. And then they left the church and have become antichrists. And so when it comes to believers... When it comes to believers, we, we have to we have to be sure about these things. You have to count the cost of what you're doing. Uh, you know, you're going to give up your life. You're giving up your life for Christ. Uh, it's no longer my life, but His. And so uh, you've got to count that as, that as cost. There's those costs. And um, a lot of people don't. And then when trials and tribulations and the world comes around knocking at the door, they're, they're going to open it up. They're going to leave. They're going to be the first ones to leave. So, But I encourage you as a believer, I want to encourage you as a believer to, to stay strong in God's Word. That's how you're going to do it. The, God's Word is resting in you, abiding in you, His commandments, His words abiding in you. That's how it's going to happen. And that's, and that's by reading the Word, by praying daily, by talking to Him, talking to Him, encouraging one another. And I'm, I'm trying to encourage you to, to stay focused, to stay in, in, on Christ. And, and 
God, to proclaim Christ, that it's all about Christ. It's all about Jesus. And so uh, let's, let's get in the habit of learning God's Word. Let's get in the habit of talking to Him. And those are things we be, need to do. So let me, that was one verse. Sorry about that. So Jesus was saying to those Jews who had believed Him, if you continue in my word, then you are truly my dis disciples of mine. And let me let me give you a little heads up. At the end of the chapter, they're ready to kill him. That's how quickly those believers change. And so we'll hopefully get to that soon. But I, I want you to see, I wanted you to see number one that God's speaking, that He spoke before, that He is continually speaking, and that He's speaking through His Son. His son, in these last days, he's speaking. He's he has spoken through his son, and so um, so hold on to that. Understand that. Read on if you want to a little bit. Read a little bit of Hebrews, Hebrews one, um, and you'll see how how Christ is greater than all the prophets and Moses and all of them. So um, read that. But I, I want you to see that. Um, if you continue in his word, if you continue that spoken word that's in you, that through Christ, that salvation through Christ, if you continue, you are truly his disciple. And I'm encouraging you to stay strong in that. Um, to, to, and if you need me, you know where I am. Uh, I'm here. Uh, call me. Uh, you want to talk? That's great. Let's do it. Um, but we're here for you. We love you, and uh, I'm going to pray for you, and then um, I'm going to leave you, and, uh, and we'll see you Sunday, hopefully, with a better signal. So, um, so let's pray. Father in heaven, again, I thank you that you have spoken. I thank you that you've spoken through your son, Jesus, and there is no doubt that he is the truth. Everything about him is true. He is truth. So, Father, I thank you for that. I thank you that he is true reality as well. That everything that we see around us right now is false. It's, it's an illusion. It's something that, uh, that will be burned up uh, when you come. And you will set up your kingdom and, and it's all about you and you are the truth. And everything that we see here will be gone. So, Father, I thank you that you have given us your Son, that you have spoken through your Son. And so, Father, I thank you for the salvation that you brought and the reconciliation that you brought with him. I thank you for that. Lord, let us be a people that go and show our love, your love, to the brethren and to our community and to the world. And we... Uh, Thank you, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Sandy Branch, we'll see you.